Hello, everyone. In this section of the uh, Technology Reboot Camp, we're going to be talking with Matt Jahans from Harkness Screens on the considerations when reopening as it uh, pertains to screens. Matt, thanks for joining us. Hey, Frank. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it'd be nice to talk today about some of the screen considerations when reopening auditoriums after COVID-19. And I think a lot of people will know this is a, a new phenomenon for everybody, and there's going to be quite a lot of questions. So I will just mute my video and we'll proceed with the presentation. So to get going, I'm going to sort of talk about different areas. So first of all, an introduction to the COVID-19 situation, and that's from a potential screen perspective. I'm going to go through what to check for. I'm going to go through corrective measures. So what can we do about some of the things we identify? Talk a little about deep cleaning, which is quite an interesting subject, which involves the whole auditorium, including the screen. We'll go through that. And finally, an excerpt from our Heartlitz video. And it's the excerpt talking about cleaning a screen and dusting a screen, which, again, may be useful in this situation. So the COVID-19 situation, what do I mean by this with regard to screens? So the key thing here from a Hartness perspective is auditoriums have been closed. And the issue here is HVAC has likely been switched off. Now, that's something we don't recommend. Ideally, we say to customers who ask, please leave the HVAC on. But often it's going to be off. We accept that. So what does it actually mean? So potential dust can be attracted to the screen. And this can cause static effects, well, caused by static effects, attracting the dust to the screen. So this is something we have to be aware of. We'll talk about high heat and humidity environments, and that's that's key. You can find that in certain countries, certain parts of the world where that can cause an issue with no HVAC. That can lead to uh, screens can be sagging occasionally, you know, if the plastic relaxes. We do hear stories sometimes of moisture, and in exceptional conditions, you can sometimes get mold growth on the screen, which can be an issue. And finally, we talk about uninstalled screens waiting in tubes. And what I mean by that is you may have an exhibitor who's perhaps maybe uh, bought a screen ready to install to do an upgrade, something like that. COVID-19 struck and that tube's been sitting there for some period of time. So what to check for? How are we going to look at these types of things? So for me, the most important thing to start with is a visual inspection of the screen surface. What is it actually looking like? So that's pretty obvious. We go into an auditorium, get into the seating area, move at different distances, up, down, left and right, looking at the screen from different angles. What can you see? Is there anything? So is there any obvious moisture or mold on the screen? This is quite important to check. Usually, if there's been moisture on the screen, it's to do with, as I mentioned, HVAC being switched off, but typically only for short periods of time. Say the HVAC was turned off overnight in a very warm temperature. The difference in temperature can cause issues. But if the HVAC has been off for a longer period of time, one would imagine that the ambient temperature would normalise over that period. And therefore, it's not a problem, but something to look out for. So is there an obvious dust build up? One might imagine if an auditorium has been left alone, the dust has settled from everywhere. You know, a static screen can draw that into the screen itself. There could be a, a big dust buildup that's you know, visible on the screen. And finally, though, I would say look at the screen surface itself. You know, is there any actual distortion? Has something changed? You know, I mentioned about sometimes PVC can relax with temperature changes. You know, is there something obvious we can see? And finally, is there any other damage? Now, the last point is not related to COVID-19 as such or any of the effects of that. However, if an auditorium has been down, you know, has there been any maintenance staff working in isolation that have gone in using the downtime? You know, has something been knocked? Is there something you're unaware of? Again, straightforward to look at. Now, corrective measures of all this. So what do we do? We've done the inspection. We've seen certain things. How are we going to address this? So if there is any moisture on the screen, the key thing is to let it dry. And for me, the best way to do that is by gradual HVAC introduction. So turn it on, slowly increasing it to the temperature and humidity it needs to be. The key thing here is the, the bullet point says is avoid manually trying to do that. If you have any patches of moisture on the screen, if you put a cloth on it and immediately start to rub the screen and dry it, any dust that is on the screen will be essentially embedded in, smeared, and will cause dirty streaks. And the downside of that, of course, is we're playing movie content. We don't want dirty, you know, dirty streaks showing up during light scenes of movie content. Now, mold I mentioned earlier, 
mold it's not common it is unlikely however it is possible again particularly in very high humidity environments without any hvac now the problem you get there if there is mold growth and it's allowed to grow into the screen particularly a coated screen surface there's often not a lot you can do about that it's actually grown into the coating itself no amount of cleaning even if you can do it gently is, is not going to solve that problem unfortunately that's probably a screen replacement so it's something we don't want now, if there's any small marks on the screen, you know, these can potentially be spot cleaned using the Hartness method I'll go through. And what I mean by spot cleaning on marks, something like if there was maybe ketchup or a small patch of cola on the screen, I'm not talking the entire screen, but little areas where they might want to be addressed. Now, if there are any signs of sagging, sometimes you can try, depending on the type of screen installation frame, perhaps a retention, if that's possible, can, that, can address that. But, you know, exercise caution with curve frames, of course, if you put too much horizontal tension, you can put a belly in. But of course, when you're looking at this, wait till the HVAC is back on. You know, if there's something very, very minor due to the change in heat over time, bringing it back up to temperature can come, you know, cause things to go back to as they need to be. But do look out for that. It's something worth checking. And with regard to screens in tubes, Hartness will recommend that screens are installed after 12 weeks. Of course, if something's got stuck in a sort of COVID-19 situation, you may, of course, have screens you know, being in tubes for a lot longer than that. Now, although we advise 12 weeks and that's what, you know, that is what we do stipulate, it may well be if it's been longer than that. Chances are it can be fine if the ambient temperatures haven't been too harsh or it's left out in direct sunlight or very dusty conditions, something like this. But to me, the key thing, again, is installation. Try the screen. Don't think it's suddenly dead just because it's been a bit longer than that. Install it, visually inspect it. The chances are it's going to be OK. You know, it's not been that long necessarily, but, you know, just do give it that inspection. Now, deep cleaning is an interesting one. I do get a lot of people asking about it. And to me, there's three primary methods of deep cleaning. So the first one I always hear about is UV. Now, Hartness don't say do deep cleaning or don't do deep cleaning, but we would give advice of what potentially can happen. So when we talk about UV, the key thing here is it can age plastics prematurely. So be that PVC of a screen, be that seats in the auditorium, anything, we're all aware of that. However, UV, particularly UVC, we hear about being used as very effective for viruses. Potentially, if there's a sensible delivery method, it's good for the audience, meaning they're not present. UV, of course, would be dangerous if it was being deployed while the audience were there. So obviously, caution for the operator using the equipment, but one would imagine those sorts of users would be very familiar with it. So that's something that is a consideration. Ozone we hear about, people are asking, can I use ozone, you know, and have that going around the whole auditorium? For us, that's a big no-no. We, we would really not recommend ozone. It's extremely harmful. And the key thing, it's harmful in very low concentrations. And one of the major problems with this is to do with lung inhalation. Um, yeah, anyone with any respiratory problems, this can cause an issue. And of course, COVID-19 is exactly that. So we would absolutely say stay away from ozone. Another one I hear about is chemical fogging or fumigation. Now, the thing here with chemical fogging or fumigation is which chemicals are we using? So you may have a, a certain mix of chemical which works fine. You know, for example, I hear with fogging things like hydrogen peroxide. We hear this could potentially be OK. It may be good. But, but the key thing is to, to do some testing on this. It may work in one situation. It may, on in, it may not in another. A certain concentration could be very harmful. It may not be. I think the, the main thing really is, and I've got a final point here, is I'd say contact Hartness for case-by-case -case advice on this. So obvious advice might be if there's time to do this, and I would urge people if they're considering, don't just suddenly choose one method and you know adhere this to your whole estate. You know, try one auditorium, try one multiplex. Does this work? Are there any issues? And the other thing is obviously the... The, the repetitive of uses. It may well be you do one UV treatment, one chemical fogging, the screen comes out, you know, comes out perfectly fine. Of course, if you're doing it repeatedly, decide to do this every day or after showing, you know, considerable, um, sorry, uh, repeatable treatments of this could cause more problems just because you're doing it time after time. So it's important to understand that. So, 
Moving on to the video I talked about, I think if we go back to things like dusting, we come back to spot cleaning. If there are small things affecting the screen, you know, not too serious, there are, there are things you can do. Ideally, I tell customers if there's not a real problem, forgetting COVID-19 now, just talking generally, do I need to clean my screen? Well, no. If an auditorium's kept in good clean condition, perhaps your, you know, your cinema's not by a big dirty factory or a huge motorway or something like that it should be fine but again if there is a dust buildup, you might want to address that if there are spot marks of you know ketchup cola whatever it might be something you want to address and the key thing with any of this is screens are fragile hartness screen services are very good technical services you know surfaces sorry they're very robust however they're still scientific paint coated surfaces so you've got to treat them with the due respect so the video i'm going to go through next will show a very simple way of doing this where you can treat it very kindly <coughs> excuse me so here's the two the two staff members here and there's a screen which looks very very dusty with some spot marks now how we would advise customers to clean this is use a long extendable pole and we can advise people on this and the important thing is with a very soft microfiber cloth on the head. So this, in theory, shouldn't damage the screen. Now, you'll see the first user very gently putting it to the top of the screen then start to walk backwards. They're applying no pressure. As the, as the pole gets lower, there's, of course, more pressure. So a second teammate takes the weight and lowers it with them to the bottom of the screen. <clears throat> now, once you get to the bottom of that screen, you've got dust on there. So shake out any dust. Hopefully it won't be as bad as this, this big dust cloud here, but whatever's on there, shake it off so it's not on there. Then working out from the middle, carrying on, go out to one side all the way to the bottom, shaking it off each time, two-man team, then back to the middle and moving out to the other side. And this will take out any, you know, take off any surface dust and you know get it off the screen you need. But of course, as you can see in the cartoon here, you can still have spot marks or cola, mustard, whatever it may be. So to clean these, you used to carefully use this with, you know, I would say a very, um, a bucket of water here, a very, very mild surfactant, something like a, a very mild liquid soap used to wash dishes, just one or two drops. And the, the important thing here is do not rub the screen. So you can see here, we're dabbing the screen very gently, not rubbing up and down or left or right. That could damage the screen surface. <clears throat> and the important thing here is to take your time. This could take 15 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes just gently going dab 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 and over time you'll get off as much as possible now if it's a very greasy coating so if it was something that had you know oil based if that's been on there for a long time you may never get it off but you can make a considerable improvement and i think the key to getting these sort of spot marks off is to get there quickly but the point here we're talking covid19 it's less likely to be spot marks it's more likely to be a dust build up but the video here just shows that there are ways you can do it so i think frank frank perhaps passing back to you now i think i've come to the end of my slides now but i think hopefully this has been useful for some of the users and it is a unusual subject i would say so it's great to have been asked along to present yeah thank you very much for that matt uh it looks like uh what key takeaway here is uh you know it's a perfect time to go through and, and evaluate your screens and uh ensure that they're in good condition and these are uh, these are good uh notes and points to be made for all screens out there so uh, thank you very much for your information and thanks for participating in the Reboot Camp, Matt. Absolutely welcome, Frank. Thank you very much.